The war leader looked down at his holographic display at one of the planets at the perimeter of his territory. He was so scared at what he had seen and the reports that had come in that he had actually started molting as much as carapace had actually shed off and was now on the ground. He saw the defense line break around the planet as though it was almost not even there. He pondered the same question over and over again. How could they move so fast? It's obvious they had hired humans to fight against them, just as they had hired humans before, but questions lingered at what he was seeing. He believed that this planet in particular was unable to be broken even by humans as vicious as they are, but as he looked they were going in and moving so fast. The human ships were always armored beyond belief, taking many hits and just shrugging them off. It was noted a long time ago that shoot a human ship in the face and it would just smile at you. Along with that, human ships were usually covered in weapons, but these weapons weren't suited for modern space fleet combat. No, humans had to get close. If a human got close, and any gods help you if you find a human on the ground with you, as they would be so close that it didn't matter anymore. But now the human ships seem to move so fast. They moved faster than his fleet could actually adjust. This wasn't right. Humans had arrived quickly from their own planets, but this was odd. It still took them a couple of their weeks to get there, and they did not perform well when they spend a lot of time in space. This was well known, which is why you didn't want to get too close to human space, as if they were ready to fight you at their full strength, you were pretty much done if they made it to the surface. How can they spend weeks in transit and still be this lethal and why were they fighting on our planets though that last question immediately answered itself they were hired the war leader still looked on in amazement as another group of his forces labeled by an icon simply changed color this color signified that they were forced to retreat unable to keep up with the barrage it was odd, since human projectile weapons usually don't perform well at long range, yet now, now how could they do this? They Could they have so many of, what did they call those? Torpedoes, dangerous devices, but usually they didn't make it. This didn't make sense. How could they force an entire battle group to back off? This doesn't, this doesn't work. Even the strongest of human battle groups only has so many of these strange weapons on them. And even then, it didn't matter. There, there were too many decoys that you could flow at them that make the torpedoes go off track. Too much of what the humans call flak to damage them before they reach the target. And of course, there was the point defense cannons. No ordnance could stay on target with so much happening in the area, which is why many have switched to direct fire weapons. Yet how can they suddenly be so good at space warfare? It surprised him. And again, another icon went colorful. It changed again, and now there was two in full retreat. Two of their best battle groups in the sector were now in full retreat. Many of them begging for assistance, but neither could help each other out. Then it went from bad to so much worse. It was clear that the humans were able to fight off these fleets, both of them, from different directions, while they made landfall. The war leader looked on in horror as one of the icons immediately changed color on his screen. That was fast, he thought to himself. That was way too fast. And then the icon went dark. Oh, gods, no, he screamed out loud. Then... Two more icons change color, then another two change color, and then one of the first two goes dark. This was not surprising, as humans on the ground are horrifying, yet if they make it to the ground, they have to make it first, right? 
but it takes them much longer. They do have those things called drop pods, but when they drop their own Terrans on the ground, they're not this quick. It takes heavy weapons to take large groups, large swaths of lands like this, hardened defense lines. How could they possibly do that? And then it hit him. It hit him like an entire moon struck him in the nuts. And he yelled out, we had to hire the humans, didn't we, son of a... The thought coalesces from seven years ago. Oh no, we paid their service, was an outdated ship, didn't we? Oh no, how do I explain that to the... How do I explain this to the queen? The old gravimetric system, the old gravimetric engine, oh no that it out surpasses the basic fusion thrust engines that the humans were using. Now it gives them far more power and this power allows them to bring up drives that are so much better and they move so much faster. They're able to outpace even the fastest ships in their fleet and that's their large ships are able to do this and more power, oh no, means more powers to the weapons. Wait, weapons, this second thought enters his mind, and again another piece of his carapace falls off and hits the ground. The plasma-infused particle projection cannons. Oh no, these are known far and wide throughout all species as the best weapons for direct fire in space combat. Now, now they have the power to charge all those cannons they want. It's not just a single spinal mounted weapon like the humans usually do. No, now they have multiple weapons on their own ships and they can fire them in volleys over and over again without having a brownout. Oh no, the new cannons also is, the, wait, it's not possible. He pulled up another readout and sure enough, the new cannons when they struck were striking deeper and harder than any standard cannons used. When he started to crunch the numbers, he again realized as his legs dropped down, the standard cannons that the humans are using are striking just as hard as one of his own battleship cannons. Wait, hold on, he thought. He checked the numbers and they did. It was stronger then the spiral mounted battleship cannons, the strongest ones they have. Wait a minute, where did that shot come from? He rewinded the recording, bringing up the hollow map, and he could see that these shots were not coming from human battleships, but corvette and frigate class, at least what the humans call them. Oh no. As he looked at it, he could see that even a single destroyer class or above from the humans could take on one of his battle groups alone and either fight it to a standstill or win. Oh no. Then he looked again. He tried to figure out what was going on. The range. This range can't be right. This can't be right. He checked it again and again and again. And sure enough, the humans had figured out how to extend its range. The range was as far as the fixed station cannons. And the only reason they knew their fixed station cannons were able to reach out so far is because these stations, even though they had a lot of power, they had to divert absolutely zero to the engines, which meant that they could bring the entire power plant to bear. Yet somehow the humans were able to engineer this so that now they had weapons that could hit harder, reach farther, and were unbelievably destructive on something so small as a Corvette class. Icons around the planet started to go dark as he swiped over to it. He saw that the humans were stretching out farther and faster. Across the planet, more and more icons were turning color and some of them were going dark. Wait, this doesn't work. Wait, we, we gave them, we, they should only have something that helps them in space combat. On the ground, humans are good, but they're not this good. I know they can take an entire planet, but they're not this fast. This, this doesn't make sense. 
humans should barely be able to hold on after traveling this far. It, it doesn't make any sense that they would be able to push this far, this fast. It's as though they're fresh off their own planet. But they spent several weeks on the way here. Oh, damn it. He screamed that one up to the sky. It was the artificial gravity unit. Oh, no. It was only a beginning level one, but it was more advanced than anything the humans had at the time. This allowed the humans to not only train harder in a higher gravity without any type of flux, a flux that everyone worried about because if it shut off, then you would simply float. But if it spiked up, well, it would crush you into the ground. Yet now, since they had a steady gravimetric field that they could actually train on to make sure their bodies did not degrade in transit, this allowed the humans to be fresh and ready for combat at all times, no matter how far they had to travel. And if anyone knows, humans inside the tin cans they call ships are not happy being stuck inside for a long time. So not only do you have dangerous humans, but now they're angry. The anti-gravity motors also allowed for heavy equipment to get to the surface a hell of a lot faster, too. This showed why they were able to take large pieces of the planet so fast. They didn't need the fusion engine-powered dropships to get down. Those would take about an hour to reach the surface. Now, they could simply lower them down and get their own heavy weapons onto the surface in a matter of minutes. The sudden realization was enough that another piece of his carapace fell onto the ground. He could see it on his screen. Human ships inside the atmosphere, but these were too big. The realization was that with the anti-gravity, they were able to bring their large ships inside the atmosphere without fear of them crashing down towards the surface as they were caught up in the gravity well. Now, heavy ships of destroyer, cruiser, and even battleship class can get inside the atmosphere. And now their cannons, their missiles, all their different weapon types can be fired into a hardened target to take it down so that those on the ground were not actually in danger. No, they could take out the heavy weapons before their ground units even get close, allowing them to move even faster as they didn't have to slow down to take out a hardened position. Oh no, oh gods, oh gods, oh gods. While he said this, and while he watched on the display, as one of the human battleships actually did enter the atmosphere and did the human's version of a, what they, what they call that, a drive-by, wiping out an entire military base and its defense posts all at the same time, he began to feel a little trickle of warm ammonia go down one of his legs. There's no stopping them now. That's all he thought. There's no stopping them. He watched as the icons across the planet went dark one by one, and there was nothing he could do about it. The ships that were evacuating the planet en masse were surprisingly not destroyed. The humans, even given a clean shot, would not fire on any ship that was clearly just trying to get the hell out. Many of the ships would fire some sort of decoys or flares or flak or anything like that, trying anything to not get shot, but the human ship seemed to not care. All he could think of, I guess it's not in their contract. The war leader could take a little solace in that, is because it's rarely in any contract to totally genocide an entire planet. But still, losing an entire planet, especially one this strategically important, is beyond horrifying. As he watched, the humans secured the planet fully, handed it over to his sworn enemy, and then simply began to pull back and leave like they always do. He worried about this for a while. He worried that they had been paid to keep a contingent, but that is almost never the case, as humans have their own sort of code of honor. If they saw what the enemy was going to do to those left on the surface, the humans might just turn their weapons on the enemy themselves. But one thing worried him. 
As the ships were leaving, he looked over and could see the icons of the human battle group. He was able to get one of his telescopic lenses over in the direction of the human fleet, and what he saw again horrified him. He saw that the humans had taken their payment. Their payment was an old enemy warship. What he could see was destroyer class. Though they just seem to be dragging it along, they're not actually powering it. Though the ship itself was completely outdated and wouldn't stand up in a normal fight nowadays, he did look forward and saw what the humans had done with their old technology, which was older than what the humans had got their hands on now. Oh, gods. When we see the humans again, what what horrors will they bring? What will they unleash? How long until they unleash it upon the galaxy at large? Will we ever be able to stop them? As the video was taken, as all holographic data was recorded and sent up to his officers, his chain of command, all the way to the Empress herself, once this was fully compiled, he gave his report. He detailed how the humans reverse engineer and evolve everything around that. Humans were once just the greatest in ground combat and used only to take planets as they were no good for space warfare. And now, now they have evolved, taken our technology, reverse engineered it and created worse weapons and now they are better at space combat than we are. The humans are becoming something else. They are becoming... Ah, uh, what is it the humans call it? Ah, yes. They are becoming Baba Yaga. 